Okay, picture this. A futuristic lab filled with computers, blinking white lights, and top-notch robots. But instead of scientists in white coats, there's a team of archaeologists and historians gathered around a computer screen. What are they doing all packed up in there? They're watching as an AI deciphers ancient Babylonian texts. I know this may sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's actually happening right now. Artificial intelligence is so advanced that machines can now understand languages that are long gone. Now, you've heard of Babylon, right? It was the world's first megacity, all the way back in 2000 BCE. Babylon has been attracting historians and archaeologists for thousands of years. Many travel all the way to modern-day Iraq to study Babylonian ruins and retrieve ancient artifacts. And they sure have found a lot. The Epic of Gilgamesh is believed to be the world's first piece of literature. It tells the tale of the king of Uruk. It was carved on a series of tablets. No, not the digital ones we have today. I'm talking about rock tablets. Studying these texts is not an easy feat. I mean, they were written in cuneiform. For us, it just looks like a series of drawings. They're not exactly the simplest scripts to decipher, especially since the tablets scientists recover are usually damaged. To date, what researchers have been able to find are some fragments of the Epic of Gilgamesh. Oh, and to make matters worse, bits and pieces of these fragments are scattered in different institutions around the world, like the British Museum in London and the Iraq Museum in… what do you think, Iraq? Sure. But fear not, for AI is here to save the day. With the help of machine learning algorithms and language processing, AI can analyze and interpret these ancient texts like never before. It can recognize patterns in the cuneiform script, decipher the meanings of individual words and phrases, and even fill in missing sections of damaged tablets. This has made researchers' lives a lot easier, believe me. Now, the most important thing for them to do is to take pictures of ancient texts and upload them to an online database. After that, the Fragmentarium does all the work. Great name, right? Researchers decided to name this mesmerizing AI tool the Fragmentarium because it's able to glue together scattered fragments of text. Basically, it's like having a super smart linguist on your team. But this one can process information absurdly fast and is available 24-7. Well, how did historians do it before, you might be asking yourself. The first person ever to decipher the Epic of Gilgamesh was George Smith back in 1872. He was a self-taught cuneiform reader who translated the 11th tablet of the poem. There are 12 tablets in total. The part he translated was one of the most important ones of the entire poem. The story of an epic flood, similar to the one in the Bible's Genesis book. Researchers like Smith and many others would copy the cuneiform symbols by hand onto a piece of paper. And it would take months trying to translate what it meant. Today, the Fragmentarium does it in a heartbeat. The tool was developed by a group of linguists at the Ludwig Maximilian University in Germany. So far, the team has uploaded about 22,000 pieces of fragments onto its platform. To date, as many as 200 researchers have used the tool. But by the end of February 2023, the Fragmentarium will be open to the public. This way, anyone can play the role of an archaeologist for a day and translate some of humanity's most important texts. So far, the Fragmentarium has made some important breakthroughs. For starters, it has found a fragment of the Epic of Gilgamesh that was published around 100 BCE which meant that people kept copying the text onto stone thousands of years after it was published. The Fragmentarium has also retrieved what is believed to be a hymn to the city of Babylon. Until this discovery, historians had never found something like that. But the AI found not one, but 15 fragments of the text that together composed this lovely hymn. According to the researchers responsible for the AI, the song describes in great detail the city of Babylon. It talks of the arrival of spring in the city and describes its architecture and its people. 
Without the help of the AI, this discovery could have taken researchers up to 40 years to make. The founders of this tool are beyond excited about its future. Without a doubt, it will help unravel a lot of humanity's ancient mysteries. But hey, AI bots are doing a lot of other bizarre things nowadays. For example, today we have an AI robot that specializes in songwriting. More specifically, it's great at creating bangers. IBM, the International Business Machines Corporation, launched its beyond-the-charts intelligent AI Watson. It serves several purposes, and one of them is deemed to work towards the future of music. Now, let's say Watson has several offspring, and amongst them, there are Watson Beat and Watson Tone Analyzer. Together with producer Alex DeKid, these AIs helped to make the 2016 hit Not Easy. These AIs were programmed to make an audience-driven song. Here's how it worked. First of all, Watson helped Alex DeKid understand the most popular subjects audiences were interested in. So this is where Watson alchemy language came in. It analyzed five years' worth of media posts and audience reactions to them. It went over New York Times articles and social media posts just to understand what audiences were most engaged with. If it had been a human doing so, it might have taken them years of research. But Watson covered it pretty fast and understood that heartbeat was what the people were most engaged with. Then came the Watson Tone Analyzer. This bot read the lyrics of over 26,000 Billboard Hot 100 songs. While Watson Beat looked at the song composition, chord progression, and popular hooks. All of this research allowed producer Alex DeKid to understand the musical fingerprint of each previous year and help him produce a song that was supposed to connect to a large audience. And that's exactly what happened. AIs today can also make your afternoon more fun with their attempt to share motivational quotes. This new bot called InspiroBot was probably programmed to be a little too nihilistic. I mean, it sees human existence as pointless. And this is not me talking, it's literally written on their main page. Some of its quotes are pretty senseless, like, You can't wear nothing, or those who challenge leaders prepare for a cat. I mean, sure, but what does that even mean? At the same time, some are heartwarming, like, You should be great, or embrace the mundane. Yeah. Inspirobot also offers the mindfulness zone, which is a pretty funny thing to experience. It's not like other meditation apps. Remember, Inspirobot has a nihilistic gene input in it. So basically, instead of inviting you to meditate and relax, this bot just tries to assemble the most random of quotes. It speaks using a Google Translator voice and has soothing background music. It tells you to try not to think of gnomes and then just keeps talking about them. As I said, it's pretty random. Honestly, there are countless examples of how AI is trying to rule over the human world. We've got Flippy, a burger-flipping robot that was designed to grill between 150 and 300 burgers per hour. Then we have There's Waldo, an AI that can find Wally in any picture in under 5 seconds. We also have ChatGPT, an open AI that can produce essays, texts, scripts, or anything you wish with just a quick prompt provided by the user. And it will make it sound as if a professional has written it. Which has created quite the controversy in the academic and professional worlds. And here I'm thinking, what will we need humans for in the future? Well, I think maybe we could use a lot more real intelligence for the important stuff, like planning and creating, and leave the mundane and stuff nobody has the time to do to AI. What do you think? <laughs>